Welcome back to episode number 17 of Dominic Prunet's Celestial Navigation course. Uh, my name is John Pinto. I'm an amateur astronomer and a mathematician, and I'll be presenting Dominic's course. Today we're going to talk about approximating your longitude from a noon site. Uh, this course is based on Dominique's uh, books and courses that he uh, used to present on celestial navigation. Uh, you can get the book and the celestial navigation exercise book at his website, marinenavigationbooks.com. Along with uh, ordering these books, you can also download a free copy of the uh, exercises in a PDF form. That'll help you uh, with the exercises that we're going to talk about in this in all episodes. So approximate longitude from noon site. Here is the theory. <clears throat> Once you know the time precisely when the sun crosses the boat's meridian, right, when it's due south of you, if you're in the northern hemisphere, or due north of you, if you're in the southern hemisphere, you calculate the longitude of the boat from the time the sun takes to travel between the Greenwich meridian and your local boat meridian. Once you know that amount of time, uh, this is the reason that uh, the longitude problem was uh, solved by the making of very good clocks, chronometers. Uh, once you know that time, the delta t in hours, minutes, and seconds, you can calculate the time taken by the sun to travel between those two meridians at 15 degrees per hour. Let's do some exercises. First example, we have the sun crossing the Greenwich Meridian at 12.04 UTC. You uh, will take some uh, sights with your sextant. We'll go over that in a little minute. But you find that the sun is highest, or some people call it the zenith of the sun, uh, at 14.34 UTC. What's the longitude of the boat? Before we get to the answer, let me just mention one thing. Where do you find that time of sun crossing of Greenwich? That's in your nautical almanac on the right-hand page in the bottom right-hand corner. It'll tell you the hour and the minute that it crossed uh, the Greenwich Meridian. Anyway, let's get back to how you calculate. So the time of the travel of the sun between those two meridians is you take the larger number, 1434, you subtract the smaller number, 1204, and you get two hours and 30 minutes. That's two and a half hours. You multiply that by 15 degrees per hour and you get 37.5 degrees. Now, how do you know you're east or west of Greenwich? Well, you know that because the sun crossed your boat later than it crossed Greenwich. So that means you must be west of Greenwich because the sun moves over the earth, apparently over the earth, from uh, east going to the west. All right, let's take another example. This time, the time of the sun crossing was 1150 UTC. You measured the zenith or the highest point the sun was over your boat at 930 UTC. So now what's the longitude of the boat? Well, the time of travel, again, is the uh, difference between the larger number and the smaller number. So in this case, it was two hours and 20 minutes or two and a third hours. And again, at 15 degrees per hour, that comes out to 35 degrees. Now, how do we know it's east? It's east because the sun crossed your boat meridian before it crossed the Greenwich meridian. So you were east of Greenwich. And that's how you determine uh, that you were east. All right, so how do we determine that highest point when the sun was in your sky and crossed your meridian? Uh, one way is the way that uh, Dominique Prunet presents it from his long experience of doing this at sea, is to estimate it from a graph of sites showing the sun's altitude around the time of your local noon. So here's, again, here's a theory. The sun goes up, reaches its highest point, the sun goes down. Uh, if you could tell exactly when it was at a certain height, say in this uh, example about uh, 64 degrees and I don't know 50 minutes and on the way down it was when it, it again was at that same uh, height you could take the difference of those two uh, times and then average them to get the time of your local noon so 
<clears throat> that's theoretical. Reality is you don't actually uh, take a sight of the sun at exactly the same altitude going up and down. You just take uh, sights of the sun. Now, in this example, he's about an hour before uh, his local noon, and he takes a couple of sights, takes uh, some more sights after his local noon as the sun's going down for about another hour. So he gets a good number of sights around the time which was noon. Then what he does is he looks at, the, and then he draws a um, pretty good curve through those uh, points of the sun. And what he'll do is he'll look at that graph that he's just drawn, and he'll take points along that graph that are at the same height. Again, this is all estimate and theoretical. Uh, you're not actually measuring the, you know, that the sun was actually, you measured the sun exactly at those heights, but the graph tells you that the sun was probably at those same heights. You take the average of each of those, you pick two or three or four uh, from your graph. You, you take the average of those, which give you, you know, a certain number of midpoints, three or four. And then you average those midpoints to get, a, you know, your best estimate of when the sun was at its highest point. The other thing this really helps you to do is, again, if you can draw this graph nicely, it also will give you your height of the uh, sun at noon, which you can use to calculate latitude, like we did in the previous episode. So using this technique, you get a, you know, a good estimate of your longitude, probably within plus or minus 30 miles, uh, because it's the sun, when it is at the top of its height, the sextant will it'll look like it's in that same position for you know a few minutes, so you can't really tell exactly when it is. But this is you know your best estimate that you're going to get, and that's why uh, we say that your estimate will be at plus or minus 30 miles or, or 30 minutes of longitude. Your out your your latitude, however, will be pretty exact because again the sun will stay at that height for a while, and so you'll get a very good reading of your latitude. Here's an exercise uh, where uh, we took uh, sites. Um, now, it looks like to me, these sites were taken about an hour and a half before and an hour and a half after his local noon. Drew a fairly nice curve through those points. Uh, and then uh, in your home exercises, there was a question about estimating the, um, the time of the local noon from this graph. And again, what you'll do is you'll you know find three or four points. They're all on the same line in your graph, maybe here, here, here. You'll calculate their midpoints, then average those midpoints. And again, you should get a pretty good feel for when your local noon was. And you can see from this graph that you're a pretty good estimate of your, of your um, height at noon, so you can calculate latitude. So enjoy doing that exercise in the exercise manual. And there's your answer, but I'm not going to show you that because you should try it first. <laughs> Sorry about that. Should have deleted that, but whatever. Um, now you can uh, do some more uh, uh, exercises, just practicing your subtractions and your multiplications by 15 degrees per hour. And again, this is all in the exercise book. And uh, hopefully you will join us for our next episode. We will approximate latitude from Polaris. Now we did a pretty good job of getting uh, latitude from a noon site um, a few episodes back, but you know, let's say the sun is uh, you know it's cloudy day, but in the evening you were able to get a, a good sight of Polaris, and you can use that again as approximate latitude uh, for yourself. All right, we'll see you next time for episode 18.